there is that famous story of six blind men, each one of them holding different parts of an elephant and describing them differently as they perceived what it was. For them, the reality that it was an elephant was not important. Rather, it was their perception of the reality that held the key. And the poet, J.G. Sachs wrote, drawing upon this very old popular Indian legend. And so these men of Hindustan disputed loud and long, each in his own opinion, exceeding stiff and strong. Though each was partly in the right, they were all in the wrong. It is a kind of similar situation for all of us. As diverse individuals we all are, we see the world in our own special way. Four people would view the same event at the same time and each one of them will report the story different from the others. It is something like this. Suppose you had seen only the first part of the film. To the exclusion of the other or the second part. What differences would have been there in your perception? Reality to an individual is merely that individual's perception of what is out there. Individuals act and react on the basis of their perceptions. It also affects their buying habits, among others. That is why knowledge and understanding of consumer perception is of great importance to the marketers. Perception is defined as the process by which an individual selects, organizes and interprets stimuli into a meaningful and coherent picture of the world. The perceptual process on the face of it is very simple. Like a computer, it involves input through our sense organs and the processing of these inputs or the stimuli by our brain is similar to the CPU. It is when we assign meanings to these sensations that the human subjectivity comes into focus. The studies of perception focuses on what we add to or take away from these sensations as we assign meaning to them. In a society like ours, every moment we are bombarded with stimuli through our sense organs. If one were to become conscious of all these stimuli, one would go bonkers. It is here that the human mind comes into play. It may either shut off or as it happens more frequently, select and interpret only those stimuli that are of its use and others that appeal to him. To be a successful marketeer, it is incumbent to know how this happens. Only this understanding could assure a successful marketing of the product amongst the consumers by him. The lowest level at which an individual can experience a sensation is called the absolute threshold. The point at which a person can detect a difference between something and nothing is that person's absolute threshold for that stimulus. Under conditions of constant stimulation, as driving through a corridor of billboards, the absolute threshold increases, 
Therefore, the ability of the senses to distinguish them diminishes. In other words, the senses get used to them, that is, they adapt themselves. Sensory adaptation is a problem experienced by many TV advertisers. For example, during the cricket match, where brilliantly executed commercials vie for attention amongst themselves as well as the match itself. These problems are sought to be overcome by the marketeers through increased sensory input. Consider the slotting of this Coke ad. It would always play immediately after a player got out. At this point, no one is interested in the ad, but none would even flip the channel for the action replay of how the player got out would come next. Differential threshold refers to the ability of a sensory system to detect changes or differences between two stimuli. In the 19th century, a German scientist Ernst Weber discovered that to notice a difference in a consumer product, it has to be above a certain threshold value for that product or service. Similarly, if the marketers want that the difference should not be noticed, it has to be below that threshold value. For example, if the price of a car was increased by a few hundred rupees, it would not be noticed. On the other hand, the increase in the price of petrol, even by one rupee, makes one sit up and at times even resort to demonstrations, dharnas and appeals. PSPO, PSPO, बोलते समय PSPO मतलब कोई नहीं जानता। PSPO माने प्यारा सपंखा और ये इनका। PSPO परमात्मा सेवा पंखा हो। This noticeable difference or the J and D has important marketing applications. Manufacturers and the marketers endeavor to determine the J and D for their products for two very different reasons, so that the negative changes like reduction in product size, increase in price or reduced quality are not readily noticed. Secondly, product improvements, lower prices are readily discernible to the consumers. How often have you wondered that any scheme to promote a product is so heavily advertised while the increase in the prices is hardly ever mentioned? The quantum of price increase so that it is not readily discernible to the consumers is the factor of J and D. To return where we had left, at any given point of time, human beings are constantly bombarded with stimuli. The sensory world is made up of infinite number of sensations which are constantly changing. More so in this information age, one is almost incessantly hammered upon by commercials in television, radio, print, dot coms, the billboards, the bus shelters, through mails and through inserts. Not all are noticed. Most of them are not even glanced upon. Some are seen at times even understood, but nothing concrete materializes. Only very few marketing strategies really work. A black and white advertisement in a color magazine will be noticed quickly than the color ads. Likewise, the same ad in a black and white newspaper might not be noticed at all, where color ads are noticed quickly. This knowledge has been successfully used by the marketers.
question is naturally raised. Why this and not others? The key to it lies in the understanding of the individual. Each person is a unique individual with unique experiences, wants, needs, wishes and expectations. Naturally, their perception to varies. The scenario turns mind-boggling as many individuals as many perceptions, therefore as many marketing strategies. Fortunately, consumers can also be grouped, therefore mass market and with it marketing strategies, aims and targets could be developed. Based on the understanding of the dynamics of perception, suitable stimuli can be created that fulfill the marketing objectives. Raining series of advertisements encompassing the product benefits and the play of emotions of the complete man are apt illustrations. number of variables that affect the consumer's perception. They could include the nature of the product, its physical attributes, the package design, the brand name, the advertisement and commercial claims made in the copy, choice and gender of model, positioning of models, size of ad and type size, the position of print ad or the time of a commercial. Contrast is one of the most attention compelling attributes of a stimulus. Advertisers often use extreme attention getting devices to achieve maximum contrast and thus penetrate the consumer's perceptual screen. For example, a growing number of magazines and newspaper carry ads that readers can unfold to reveal oversized poster-like advertisements. They have the stopping power of giant ads among traditional sizes. With innumerable stimulus that a person is exposed to, he or she reacts to it not as separate and discrete sensation. Rather, they tend to organize them into groups and perceive them as unified whole. This method of organizing simplifies the life for the individual to a large extent. These specific principles that underlie perceptional organization are often referred to as Gestalt Psychology on the name of the school that developed it. The basic principles of perceptual organization are three in number figure and ground, grouping, and closure. Figure and ground refers basically to contrast. In other words, the stimuli that the marketer wants to get noticed or the figure has to contrast to its background that is the ground. Grouping refers to the tendency among the individuals to group stimuli automatically so that they form a unified picture of impression. The perception of stimuli in groups or chunks of information 
facilitates their memory and recall. Closure refers to the need amongst the individuals to form a complete picture. This they do by organizing their perceptions. If the pattern of stimuli to which they are exposed is incomplete, they nevertheless tend to perceive it as complete by consciously or subconsciously filling the missing pieces. It is not just the organization, even interpretation of perception is a personal phenomenon. Interpretation is assignment of meaning to sensation. It, therefore, is a function of characteristic of stimulus, the individual and the situation. All interpretation involves a factual component and an effective or emotional response to the stimulus. Cognitive interpretation refers to the process where an individual relates the stimuli to the existing categories of meaning in his own mindset. This is a dynamic interactive process as individuals acquire new information, the existing categories of meanings change and so do their relationship with other categories. For example, when cell phones were first introduced, the consumers would interpret the stimulus in relation to the existing meaning in his mindset, that is, the telephone. As versions of more sophisticated cell phones with multiple functions came in, the consumer's detailed knowledge about the product and its variants allowed him to build several subcategories for classifying various types of cell phones not necessarily related to the conventional instrument. It is the individual's interpretation, not reality, which influences individual's behavior. Marketers clearly need to distinguish between the semantic meaning and the psychological meaning assigned to a stimuli or a word by a given individual or group based on their experiences or context. Affective interpretation, on the other hand, is the emotional response triggered by a stimuli like an ad. Depending upon their own experiences with the product or culture specific meaning, individuals may emotionally react to stimulus or a message or language of a given ad. In addition to the above individual characteristic, others like expectation and his learning also affect interpretation. Individuals tend to interpret stimuli consistently with their own expectation. For example, we expect glossily packaged product to be of superior quality and an unpackaged lower priced product to be of low quality. Similarly, Expensive brands are evaluated favorably than an identical product with an unknown or lower priced brand. This shows that consumer expectations often allow unreal interpretation of reality. It has also been observed that in our society each one of us have a specific image of how a master me would look like, how a successful professional should look like, or for that matter, how should a mother look like. Nothing would demonstrate it better than within the same family how a grandmother and daughter-in-law are assigned different roles. Some situational characteristic like hunger, loneliness or mood affect the interpretation of a given stimuli. It is interesting to note that the same food aroma can be interpreted as appetizing when one is hungry and as unwelcome when one is satiated. As we have just said, the characteristic of the stimulus create the basic structure to which the individuals respond to by assigning meaning. Semiotics is the science of how meaning is created, maintained or altered. It includes anything that conveys meaning including word, picture, music, color, form, gesture, product characteristic, price and so on. The science of semiotics is often used by the marketeers to market their products. However, individuals are also subject to a number of influences that tend to distort their perceptions. For example, Take the case of physical appearance. Studies have found that attractive models are more persuasive and have more positive influence on the consumer behavior. Similarly, 
as per prevailing consumer mindset, we have stereotypes. It is not just the persons, even the products might throw up its unique imagery which may or may not be true. But there is an area where change in the stereotype image has taken place. With increasing environmental consciousness, factories belching smoke to denote progress have replaced leafy green emission in this ad of Ecotech City. Certain other influences that distort the perception and should be kept in mind is the knowledge that first impression tends to be lasting. That people have the tendency to jump to conclusions before examining the evidences or claims and the halo effect among others. Products and brands have symbolic value for individuals who evaluate them on the basis of their being consistent with the personal image they have of themselves. Some products, it seems, agree with individuals' self-image, others do not. Consumers attempt to preserve or enhance their self-image by buying products they believe are congruent with their image. Consumers may not resemble the sporty role models of Nike, Adidas or Reebok, but the image they have of themselves reflect in the purchase of such products. Not just the products, consumers also tend to shop in stores that have images consistent with their own self-image. Major shops focus to build a strong image for their shops with stress on customer service and to make shopping a pleasant experience. Image building also takes into account how the product and service is positioned. Positioning is the image that the consumer has in his mind. Vice versa, positioning also is the image that the marketers try to create in the consumer's mind. Products or brands are so positioned that they are perceived by the consumer to fit a distinctive niche in the marketplace, a niche occupied by no other product. Positioning strategy is the essence of the marketing mix. It complements the company's segmentation strategy and selection of target markets. The result of a successful positioning strategy is a distinctive brand image on which consumers rely in making product choices. It leads up to consumers carrying mental images of particular brands. In highly competitive environment of today, a distinctive product image is the most important of all. As products become more complex and marketplaces more crowded, consumers rely more on the product's image than on its actual attributes in making purchase decision. It could even be in showering their attention.